Hi, my name's Ryan Groves, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Arcona. The vinyl record was a revolutionary technology in its time. Before the vinyl record, a song was simply an idea. If you wanted to hear a song, you had to find a band that played it, and you had to go to your local pub to hear them play it. The vinyl record transformed a song and our understanding of a song into an audio file. And since then, that paradigm hasn't changed. We've had the tape cassette, we've had the CD player, the MP3 player. Um, but the challenge is that the MP3, an audio file, is static. The future is not static. Future generations are going to look at the MP3 in the same way that we look at the vinyl record now, which is that it's antiquated. So, excuse me. So there's a problem with music creation. It's costly and it's difficult. It requires skill to do, even though the tools are, are available. At the end of the day, you end up with a static MP3 pile. It's not personalized, and it doesn't synchronize to your situation. At Arcona, we have a music engine that can be an AI music engine that can be integrated into any application. It can automatically create dynamic and highly synchronized music and enables us to create an ecosystem of music packs that are copyright free. So this is what our engine does. It takes the blueprint of a song and returns the, idea, the song back to an idea. So you have a blueprint of a song. You can uh, transform it into any style. And then on top of that, we have an emotional or intensity layer that can adapt that song in, in real time. So let's look under, under the hood to see what this looks like. Say I'm a consumer of, of this music. Um, I personally like house music. So with Arcona, say I'm on my way to work, and I want to start out with some happy music. Then all of a sudden, I find out on social media that I missed a party this weekend. So I get very sad. Then I realize that I'm late for the bus, and I might miss, uh, might be late to work. So I get very agitated and angry. Uh, then finally, I get on the bus, find my seat, and realize I'm actually not going to be late to work. So finally, I'm calm. So this is what we mean with adaptive music. Our vision is that there will be an AI band in every application. And we're approaching this in a very specific way. So the biggest use case, or the, the biggest pain point that we see is actually in the gaming industry, industry with rhythm games. Rhythm games are those games that are highly synchronized with the music, where they've actually gamified a song. So you're, you're pressing buttons or moving to the, to the rhythm of the music. But then it, it's much, it goes much beyond gaming as well. So we, after that, we'd like to expand to mobile, where we will have a personal band in every pocket. And we also see implications for uh, actually detecting emotion from a, a video stream. But the gaming is, industry is a great place to start. There's, uh, last year, it was $136 billion. It's still growing 10% every year. Um, and for uh, sort of some insight into the model, the in-game purchase and downloadable content market itself was $41 billion in 2018, which is uh, bigger than the music industry itself. Uh, sorry, the, the movie industry. A particular example is Fortnite, which is a free-to-play game. They've made a billion dollars in revenue, and 11% of those purchases were purchases that enabled your player to dance. So they were dance moves. And that, so $100 million was spent on dance moves. So like I said, rhythm games are highly synchronized, um, and they require highly synchronized music, so it's hard to source. Also, it's a great market because it's consistent. It's, throughout the years, there's been uh, Guitar Hero, Rock Band, Dance Dance Revolution, the Virtual Idol series in Japan. And again, recently, with VR, Beat Saber has just become a massive hit. It sold a million copies for 20 million in revenue in the last year. It was the biggest title on any platform. This is a very current uh, segment. Uh, and that's a picture of Beat Saber, where you, you're hitting boxes with a lightsaber. Um, also, Beat, Beat Saber just got by, bought by Facebook as well. Um, they have an established model of mus selling music packs within their game. 
and they also have huge communities of early adopters that are tinkerers and uh, innovators. That they like to embrace new things. So the adaptive music solution that we're pitching with them is to take music and explode the amount of playable content by leveraging intensity profiles and any, any range of time. So these can just be automatically input into our system, and you can get new playable content. We've bootstrapped this. Our team is uh, just two at the moment. Um, my co-founder, Amelie, uh, she has a background in, in music and machine learning, just like me. She did her PhD and worked at SoundCloud. Um, we really have no competitors in the adaptive space. Weave is the only company doing this. There are AI music companies, other ones, but they don't do adaptive music. We have multiple potential partners that we're uh, not able to publicly disclose in the rhythm game space. Um, and yeah, that's us. So help us to amplify your narrative with Arcona. Thank you very much. Judges, how many customers do you have to date? We don't have any customers. We're working on uh, some projects with some partners in the rhythm game space. What are some of the milestones you hope to achieve with those partners so that you can eventually have customers? Yeah, so integration is a challenge. Uh, we have a, a Unity engine. So our, we already have the plugin that can, can directly integrate into the game development environment. So the, um, the, the hurdle there is just uh, integrating it and, and uh, you know, branding it and making, making sure we're communicating the value to the, to the consumers. What kind of signals can you take in to determine what type of music to play? Like, could you take in biometric signals uh, or things from, you know, like uh, fitness trackers? And you showed us you moving the, the, you know, the motion manually, but how do you make that work with something like a video game to be able to, dis to sense different moves or moments or scenes? Yeah. Right. Um, so uh, at the moment, uh, we are not uh, taking external uh, information. Uh, we see that as a fortune, uh, future opportunity. Um, uh, so that, uh, for instance, when we'll uh, actually target like uh, video and streaming, uh, that's when we think that we should be looking at like um, external emotions and uh, and external information. Uh, rhythm games, uh, what they need at the moment is synchronized music, and uh, they can use those profiles that they define in advance to generate music. So they don't need so much of this external information just yet. But of course, as uh, you know, this is tackled, then we can move on to the next challenges that would be about external information. Now that Facebook has moved into this space by acquiring Beat Saber, what's defensible about your platform that couldn't be copied by a company like that? Um, so Beat Saber doesn't have this technology. What, what they've acquired, they don't have this technology. Uh, the only other company that has an adaptive music engine is Weave. Um, so it's, it's very defensible um, because e all of the AI companies have been doing it with um, in a cloud-based solution. So it's not reacting to anything in real time. So we've designed it from the ground up to, d to do that uh, adaptiveness, and nobody else has done that okay. other than Weave. So I'm struggling to think how big a problem this is for you know, mm -hmm. game developers. Can you give me a little bit of, of insight into how game developers are thinking about this like, challenge? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So um, the challenge with game developers is the big studios, big studios are building these systems sort of themselves for, for like one-off um, systems. So we're trying to democratize that process to the entire gaming industry. Um, and those systems are not repurposable. They're based on audio files, so they're still not that dynamic. Um, so there's a lot of work in uh, you know, sal salaries of audio engineers, um, the actual compositions themselves, mixing, mastering. All, there's a ton of work going into that um, in the bigger studios. Um, so it is quite a huge effort. Um, and then also with, with Rhythm Games specifically, they already have this, this marketplace available. Um, okay, just to follow up on that, sort of how big is Rhythm Games out of the whole kind of gaming market? Mm -hmm. And within this, um, you mentioned people buy moves. Um, historically, skins have been quite a big part of the, of the purchase. How yeah. big do you reckon uh, the sound will be out of that pie? Yeah, we did some analysis on that. It's sort of somewhere between 2 to 4% of, of the market is spent on the music development. Um, so with a $150 billion market, you know, three to six. Um, then additionally, sorry, what was the second part of your question? 
rhythm games out of the whole gaming. Uh, right, yeah, so rhythm games, they are very consistent, as I said, they do fluctuate, but it's about, um, it's about 1% of the market as well, of the gaming industry. So it fluctuates between 300 million and 1.5 billion, roughly. How close is your product to being like an SDK that you could ship out into a marketplace for either gaming or? Yeah, so that's the, the biggest hurdle was the Unity plugin. So Unity is the biggest game development um, company, game development platform, and it is a plugin with Unity. So as long as the, per the developer's using Unity, they can sort of drag and drop uh, in a way. But then again, you still have to hook up. Yeah. So the external signals, you can hook up something like biometrics, for example, but in order for, for it to be meaningful, you have to do that, you know, you have to extract the meaning yourself. So we leave the game developers to do that. So what's your go-to-market strategy just to go through Unity to start with or to also go direct to customers? Uh, to go direct to customers is, is the initial strategy. So we really think there's something um, exciting and new in the rhythm, rhythm game market, and we have some exciting opportunities that I'm happy to discuss privately. Um, so that's, that's where we really want to test this idea out. So our, our, our hypothesis is that users will pay for music as in-game purchases. And if that's true, that's a huge thing. Um, and that creates a whole new market beyond just rhythm games and, and, and games in general. But sorry, just to more specifically, it's that users will pay for games that are personal, or music that is personalized to them at that point, right? Yes. OK. Do you, you showed us how to do this with house music, but could you do this with pop music? Totally. Um, so we do have we do support uh, 16 styles, uh, including yeah pop, rock and roll, uh, even chip tune. So we do cover a lot of musical styles and genres. Um, yes. W what does that really mean? Like, is that does that mean that I'm going to hear Taylor Swift in rap or like Taylor <laughs> Swift with classical music? Like, wh what does that really yeah. mean? We, yeah, we can Answer do quickly. that. So. Um, yes. Yeah, so we, I mean we. We train these styles with machine learning models, um, so we support sort of a wide range. But then uh, we're also looking into sort of democratizing that process a little bit and getting creators in there. Cool. Um, the biggest challenge with with something like pop or rap, like you just said, is the vocals. But there's also a lot of r really compelling research to to think that we'll be able to generate vocals within the next year or two as well. All right, one more round of applause for Arcona. Thank you, that. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have 